wouldn't be the same without Fetty on the hill. Our boy <laughs> Fetty on the hill here uh, tonight. What are you doing with Washington and Seattle? Seems like everybody yeah. loves why everybody loved Washington in, in the last night. Didn't happen. They like Washington this morning. Didn't happen. They like Washington again tonight. Who do you like? You know what, Gabe? I'm glad I listened to you because that line kind of scared me off with Flexen, but I woke up and said, you know what? Screw traps, whatever. I'm going to take Seattle because they're hot, and I'm glad I did. They hung on for the win. I'm with you, buddy. I'm with Seattle. I can't, This team's won nine games in a row. It's a very short price. It's been a good afternoon in baseball. Let's ride the hot hand. The Mariners are getting back in business right now. They're they're feeling good. The offense is there. Let's roll. I'm on, I'm on Seattle. I think it's a great price. Our boy Fetty, you know, kind of feel bad for Fetty playing for the Washington Nationals, but this is all about business. Let's go with Seattle today, buddy. Let's go. Roll Mariners. Roll. Base, baseball is a streaky sport. And uh, right now, no one's hotter than the Seattle Mariners. Uh, we'll continue to ride uh, the wave uh, with the Mariners uh, right now. So uh, big news um, with the Toronto Blue Jays. They decide to pull the trigger. And uh, Charlie Montoya uh, has been relieved of his duties as manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. And I don't agree with the move right now, Cam. I would have given them this week. You've got a, a chance to rack up some wins this week uh, with the All-Star break coming up. And now you see uh, there's breaking news, guys, as far as the Kansas City Royals team non-vax. It's Novak Djokovic's favorite Major League Baseball team. Like, basically half of them. Um, like, literally 10 guys will not be able to play in Toronto. So, kind of a kind of a bad time to screw over Montoya, in my opinion, Cam. I would have given them the week because they're probably going to win a bunch of games uh, this week. But clearly, they already made their mind up. I don't know how the clubhouse is going to respond to this. I think they like them. Um, we saw Philadelphia when they fired Girardi. They did get better. We saw when the Angels fired Madden. They got worse. What do you think happens with the Blue Jays? I think it's a great point by you. And, yeah, they're going to beat Kansas City. What? But do does Schneider and the rest of the guys get, get get the credit? No. If Montoya was there, they'd still beat these guys with all the guys they have out. You know I talked to our friend Griff who works for the organization. He was tight with Charlie, so he's pretty emotional today. He's upset about it, and I agree with everything you said. They had bullpen issues. They had a lot of guys. And you know what? A lot of guys in that team fundamentally are doing stupid things. I would have given them a week or two as well, Marenzi. This team is still in the second wild card spot. They're one and a half games out of the wild card. I know they've been underachieving. That has a lot to do with the players. It isn't to do with Montoya. They had half of their bullpen arms have been absolutely taxed and gassed. What do you want the guy to do? He can't throw people. He's trying to patch together teams just to get wins. And these guys are screwing up. I'm telling you, Marenzi, I don't think it's the manager's fault. I think this team needs to get their head out of the asses and figure it out. Well, if you look at a lot of the reasons why the Toronto Blue Jays are not successful, Cam, a lot of it is the signings. Listen, Matt Chapman's hitting 220, bro. Uh, yep. Barrios is is average. Kikuchi was a train wreck. Is any of that yep, Montoya's right. fault? Is it Montoya's fault that the Blue Jays um, have left more runners in scoring position than any than anyone in baseball besides two teams? That's not the manager's fault. Nope. Shout out to our AM radio affiliates. I am Gabriel Morenci, kicking it with the raging redhead uh, Cam Stewart. Uh, we got a full house here this evening. Paul Bovey's going to step up and join us in a couple of minutes. Always look forward to Paul's winner of the week. Torched it last week with the WNBA. I think Paul's dipping his beak into some Major League Baseball uh, tonight. For those of you just joining us right now, both me and Cam are pulling the trigger. Are going to ride the red hot Seattle Mariners. Back end of a doubleheader. They took the first end 6-4. They've now won nine games in a row. Meanwhile, Washington have now lost 10 of their last 11 games as well, Cam. Some of these baseball lines are very curious, aren't they? And listen, some of them are traps. Some of them are bad lines. It just is what it is. There's so many games in a baseball season. The odds makers can't get every one of them right. I'm just surprised about this. You got a red-hot Seattle team here, Cam. I understand this game more so than the first game. Like, you know, to me, it was a great spot for Seattle last night. I thought it was a good spot for them again today. Always tough to win both ends of a doubleheader. But let's be real. The Nationals are a bad baseball team. No, they are. And uh, they're just obviously, they got a major issues with their pitching staff, hitting uh, all sorts of guys. And you know what? Yeah, Seattle's hot. And Seattle understands, hey, Houston's hot. They're one of the best teams in the majors. We got to keep on winning. Winning's contagious. They're putting guys out there, and it's impressive to me. It's like next man up, Gabe, for these guys you watch. They're getting key hits at key times. I love this team, I, and I know you got the wins over on them. They're starting to feel it. Hey, look at Kansas City again today. Uh, they're, they're starting to win. Like Certain things are happening in baseball. You said it. Teams get streaky. Teams get hot. It's a long season, and right now we got to ride the Mariners' train until it comes to a stop. 
And we should note that the Kansas City Royals are still the second worst team in the American League. <laughs> oh, I, I'm quite aware. I'm just saying they've done very well. <laughs> they <lately>. are 30. <laughs> they're, six, they're six and four they in the last today. 10. They're yeah, six yeah, and four yeah. in the last 10. We're going to we'll, we'll tip our cap. We'll give you that cap. We'll, we'll give you that. Yeah, exactly. Well, how about, how about our Baltimore Orioles? Wow. These guys, the Baltimore Amazing. Orioles. This is the real deal now. These guys are now 30 and 20 in their last 50 games. It's actually like the fourth best record in the American League. So it's awesome. not, you know what I mean? It's not just sort of this nine game win streak that they're on. Incidentally, their nine yeah. game win streaks the first time since like uh, 1999, Ken. 1999. Think about that. Like that was so long ago. Like um, I don't even think like MySpace was created yet. People thought the internet was going to crash the world in the year 2000. <laughs> Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast CBG, to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penguins. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. And then Garrett Cole will be the payup price here at $10,500. Uh, Washington in particular, David, 1-9 and nine in their last 10. Worst team in baseball by far. Uh, but pretty decent matchup tonight at home. Yeah, they stink. But Josiah Gray does not stink. Now, uh, he has definitely had some troubles with run prevention this season. He's given up, you know, six earned runs a couple times, seven earned runs a couple times. But even... The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. So, Connor, you see the odds. How do you blend the future and all the changes we will see in the coming years with what is actually going to happen in the present? I don't think it makes any difference. I think this; those are two totally separate deals. I, I don't think USC's 2022 outlook is dependent on what happens, you know, with their future move to the Big Ten. I think it's dependent on whether or not Caleb Williams is actually going to be good against a defense who can actually who can actually play football. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. Close, you can get some California programming. Get ready for one of the most expensive campaign races we've ever seen on your TV sets. Have you watched a Giants or yes. a Padres game? Yes, and the ads are absolutely insufferable. Vicious, I would say. Just, I mean, they're going at jugulars. Like, they're doing some real nasty, nasty <laughs> stuff to each other. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. To roll with a guy like Xander Shabby that's as hot as he is. I think that you have to have a small piece of him in some aspect because history says at this tournament that guys that come in playing very well, whether it's a win in, in the five or six weeks coming in or a bunch of top tens in the five or six weeks coming in, they usually perform very well. Right. Uh, I think that you have to have a small piece. The Sports Grid Network. All right, let's roll. Shout out to all of our AM radio and television uh, affiliates on the Sports Grid Radio and Television Network, Sirius XM Channel 159. This is Game Time Decisions. I am Gabriel Morency alongside Cam Stewart. Countdown to kickoff is on, man. We're now 22 days away from the start of the National Football League uh, preseason, the Hall of Fame game, three weeks away uh, right now. We've got Thursday night uh, football on top. I know our boy Paul Povey already has some NFL futures in. 
I'm beginning to kick the tires uh, right now. I'm just uh, always hesitant to pull the trigger because I'm always worried about uh, about training camp injuries. I've always said, Paul, if you're going to bet on a future far in advance, do it on an under because only bad things can happen, right? Like if you're betting an over in the future, someone can get hurt and stuff can happen. If you're betting an under, hey, somebody gets hurt, even better, right? Uh, that's that's always been my strategy. If I'm going to bet in the future, like, you know, I'm talking about if I'm going to pull a, pull a trigger on a football future in June, it's only going to be on an under, Paul. That's my take. Well, I mean, there is definitely some truth to that, but like I'm on the under for the Ravens. So I'm, I'm confident because I really don't think they have an offense, a go-to receiver, but they could also go out and acquire Antonio Brown. So sometimes it does work the other way, but I would agree for the most part, that's a sound strategy. I appreciate it. I thought we'd start off with an argument. You agree as well, Cam? <laughs> yes, I did. I thought we did. Look at Paul. He's being nice. Don't worry. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. I'm with Paul. I don't know what it is about the Ravens, Paul. We must be hated in Baltimore, but I had the under the other year, too. Marenzi knows. Like, I'm just not sold on this team as well. And if uh, I'm looking at teams to fade, uh, I think Pittsburgh's going to be – I-, I love fading the Ravens. I think they're, the books give them way too much respect. And other than special teams, I'm not really impressed with them. So I couldn't agree with you more. Let me ask you guys, because there's a prop out here. This is something that I'm I'm looking at here. And um, who do you think, Cam, the worst team in the league is going to be this year? Because that's one of my favorite props on the board. Who do you think the worst team in the league? Who's going to have the number one pick in the NFL draft? You know what? Houston? Seattle? Seattle could be in contention. Seattle are seven to one, plus seven hundred yeah, well, to have the worst record. Seattle might be the second or like they're they're going to be like bottom three for fun. They're they're, they're if they they're really do start game. Drew Locke and yes. and or Geno Smith for seventeen games, it could be a long season, Paul. Win three or four. Yeah, games. well, that's what I'm saying. You just don't know what you get. I mean, the players are raving about Geno Smith. And it's hard to believe that a guy is going to turn his career around at age 32. But he did have some shining moments last year when he came in. Uh, so so I, I would say that if these guys uh, just head south as, they, as I expect them to, Seattle has a really good shot unless Geno Smith steps up. I don't expect Drew Locke to step up, but maybe the time on the bench – will give Geno what he needs to become a mediocre quarterback in the NFL and and get him to, let's say, 500. Who do you think, Paul, just off the top of your head, if you think coming into the year? Houston or Houston's plus 350. Atlanta is 4-1. to one. Uh, Seattle is 7-1. to one. The Jets are 8-1. to one. Jacksonville is 9-1. to one. Carolina is 10-1. to one. Uh, Chicago was 10-1. to one. For me... Those are two teams that really could be in the mix. I think the Chicago Bears really could be the worst team in the NFL. I think they have the least Uh, talent on the offensive side of the football. I know they're decent defensively. They've lost a lot. Like like I said, to me, the Chicago Bears are in the running. Carolina with Baker Mayfield will probably win six, seven football games. I think Jacksonville are going to be better. So, you know, I think Atlanta could be a front runner for this as well. But Seattle are intriguing. But the Bears really do catch my eye. I think the Bears are going to be a bad football team. They're a 10 to 1. So, um, what do you think, Cam? You're saying the Texans? I, the Falcons? I wish, we could do a super, I wish we could do a Superfecta box, Paul style. Seahawks, Texans, Bears, Falcons, in any order. You could take a couple of them. For the record, I, uh, I spoke to someone today, and they told me that they're, they jumped all over the New York Giants to be the worst team in the league at 20-1. to 1. No really? way. That's not going to happen. No way. Happen. No, okay. they're not going to be first the worst. Of all, no, no. First of all, the Giants have made some good moves. Their problems in the secondary, I mean, they lost a few guys back there, but all around, they've improved their team. And they just need their receivers to play 16 games or 17 games because they've been injured, but what they did on the offensive line in the offseason is very positive, and they're just going to need him to gel. I don't think the Giants are the worst team in the league either. Listen, I'm actually more pro Daniel Jones than most people, 
Now you got Brian Dable in here. I, you know, I think Saquon Barkley is a big key to this football team. Obviously, the health of the wide receivers as well. I think the offensive line is better, Paul. Uh, you talk about the secondary could be a little bit of an issue here, but it's almost to me, it's almost like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like I think Joe Judge was that bad, but Joe Judge was a complete train wreck as a head coach, right? Yeah. So Brian Dable can't be any worse. So they have to be better. It's sort of like without Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. And that's another team, too. I don't think Jacksonville are going to be the worst team in the NFL this year, Cam. I don't think no, Detroit no are going to be. Like, like I said, it's a legitimate question. So what, you say Houston? Who's, the, you know, who's going to have the worst record in the league? Houston or Seattle. Those are, those are my picks. I think the Bears, kind of, they, they might squeeze out a few. I hate to say this. as you know what? Houston. Houston will be the worst team in the National Football League. I'll give it. Got to give Seattle something. I, I think the Houston Texans are going to be definitely the worst. Team. You know what? I disagree with that. I I think Lovey Smith is going to pump some energy in this team, and I think they're going to be respectable. They they played a the few worst. good games. Last year I think they and, win five games, type thing too. I don't think yeah, they're the worst. They'll I win five they, games. I, or something. I, think win five. I think they win five games, and I think Gabe, I'm going to go with your selection and say Atlanta has a real good shot to be the worst team in the league. They really do. <laughs> they're bad. They're real bad. They do. Yeah. Like, uh, like they, they, they are rebuilding. Look, Marcus Mariota is their starter. I don't expect that to last long either. I think Desmond Ritter uh, will eventually take over. But for the record, so, yeah, guys, uh, three weeks away from the start of the National Football League preseason, it's go time. So, FanDuel has it up. They also have best, best regular season record props up, but worst regular season record was intriguing to me. So just quickly, once again, it's the Houston Texans plus 350, Atlanta Falcons plus 400, Seattle Seahawks 7 to 1, New York Jets 8 to 1, Jacksonville Jaguars 9 to 1, Carolina 10 to 1, Chicago 10 to 1, Detroit 12 to 1. Then there's a big jump. Uh, Giants 20 to 1, Steelers 25, Browns 25, Raiders, Commanders, Dolphins, etc. I don't think the if Dolphins you are tell the worst me, team. If you tell me right now that Ritter is going to be in his quarterback, for the Falcons by game six, Atlanta is going to be the worst team in the league. This guy's not an NFL quarterback. Not I think he will opinion. be. I think he will uh, take I, over for Marcus Mariota probably after. Mar well, Marcus will probably get okay. hurt or after four games or whatever. When's I their first see Mariota bond? lasting long. He's definitely. Yeah, they drafted him, Cam. Like Mariota's just, I mean, he makes $5 million a year or something. Like he's just a, he's a placeholder. Falcon schedule. When's their bye week? Oh, yeah. What do you think of the Steelers, uh, Paul? Trubisky or Kenny Pickett? What do you think? I would go with Trubisky, and I like the Steelers over. That number at seven is soft. I think I covered this on your show. I, I mean, they they made some decent acquisitions, and I don't I don't think they're all bad. And w w wait a second, why are we excluding Mason Rudolph? Um, because he blows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why are we? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I like Mitch Trubisky as well. I like, like Trubisky better than Pickett. I think Pickett could have problems actually, but I still look. Tom has never had a losing record. Like you said, you have a low win total. Um, yeah. I wouldn't bet against him. Plus, Deshaun's going to get suspended. <laughs> Well, come on. Yes, he Mason is. Mason Rudolph has had his chance already. He's had his chance. Yeah. That's why they drafted him. Kenny Pickett. Yes. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> it's a fair analysis, I thought. I thought it was fair. I, I, very fair. Yeah, true. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. Work. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Donovan being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, 
can't. We have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. The Brew Crew now have lost four of their last five games, so they can't pull away despite the minus 240 price they're booked with in the NL Central. This is like the bizarro world of the AL East, right, where everybody seems to be really good, including the Baltimore Orioles. And then you take a look at the Brewers and the Cardinals going, we get no pushback from anybody behind us with the Pirates, Cubs, or Reds. So, yeah, sure, we'll go 5-5 five and five over 10, and we'll hang around in this divisional race until August and through yep. September. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. All right, now let's go to the outfield, and we'll start off with Mike Trout, who – Looked like he was on his way to an, a fantasy MVP season, but my gosh, he's in the worst slump of his career right now, George, over the last month. Giancarlo Stanton will start. He, of course, plays for the Yankees. Aaron Judge, no question. And then Shohei Otani. And that's really who everyone will want to see play on Tuesday night. Yeah, but Otani was voted in as a pitcher and the DH, right? The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I got roasted on Twitter because I said they're locked to go over six and a half wins. Folks, the missing piece, if you really study the Panthers and you, and you learn what they're looking at there, they were a dreadful quarterback last season. Matt Rule's personnel control made a decision. He was going to have someone to compete for that starting job, and it's going to be Mayfield. Mayfield will one up winning that job. He, he's got to win it. They need him to win it. He's going to give him some stability. The Sports Grid Network. All right, let's get to some baseball. I am Gavin Ryan. It's game time decisions. Cam Stewart in the house. Paul Bowlby uh, joining us uh, right now. Um, we've got uh, Seattle and Washington off and running back end of a double header. Pittsburgh and Miami coming up, uh, Cam. 640 Eastern time. Your Miami Marlins. I tell you what, the Pittsburgh Pirates are a hot baseball team uh, right now. Uh, the Bucks are on a four-game win streak. It's their longest in three years, actually. It's hard to believe. It's been three years since they've, <laughs> they've won. This, Unreal. This, this many games, uh, four game win streak, looking for five, but um, they played well. They actually own the Marlins. They're 14 and six the last 20 games against the Marlins. The Marlins have scored just 21 runs in their past nine games. The Marlins are continuously favorites against them. Cam every night, and the uh, Pirates have beaten them so far. What are you doing with the game tonight? I'm, I'm laying off. I have that Marlins wins over total. These games have made me sick. I'm not, I don't want to deal with them anymore. Uh, yeah, that's it. It's gone. Um, I'm letting this game go, and if they win, so be it. That helps the wins total. I can't, I'm not laying juice with this team. Pass. All right, let's get to Paul Bovey's uh, play of the night uh, here tonight. Boston and Tampa tonight, uh, Paul. Uh, we got McClanahan on the hill uh, for the Tampa Bay Rays. He's been absolute dominant, 9-3, 1.73 earned run average uh, on the season. Uh, he's got um, six straight starts in which he's held opponents to one earned run or less. What's your take on this Tampa-Boston game tonight, Paul? Yeah, so how do you go against that? I, I mean, I understand the line has been driven up to unrealistic levels. It, it opened in the 140s, which was obviously a bookmaker mistake. And I think as of an hour ago, uh, Tampa was minus 182. So I went to the run line, and I also caught some value on Tampa first five innings combined with under four and a half. So you're stealing a run on, on the under in the first five. And on that one, I simply played the number. You, you can't turn down plus 230 on that 
when you combine a minus 190 and getting the extra run off the three and a half. I mean, as you mentioned, Gabe, this guy has been lights out. It's, he, I mean, he's arguably could be the Cy Young winner. We, the way he's going, he had a 3-0 ERA in the month of May. And since then, what is he, 77 innings, 10 earned runs, faced the Yankees three times, gave up three runs in 18 innings. And you got the guy on the other side, was Winkowski, he faced the Yankees once. They teed off on him for six runs in five innings, six base on balls. I, I mean, this is night and day in terms of pitchers. So I, I, I got to go to the run line here. There's no more value on the straight. I did get off a little straight at 155, run line at plus uh, 135, a little more run line at, at plus 130, and I think they shut them down. I like your boldness here as well. So the play is you're saying Tampa to win the first five innings and under four and a half. Yeah, frankly, that's to me, that's a mistake in the line. I, I, if you're laying 185 to 190 in the first five and combining that with four and a half as opposed to three and a half, that that should not be plus 230. And I, and I sent you a copy of the ticket. That should not pl be plus 230. That's 180, 185 maybe. Uh, no more than that. Cam, what do you think about this game? What do you do with the game? The total is six and a half. Tampa's, uh, Tampa have a lot of injuries coming into tonight, but they've been they finding do. a way despite the fact that they, you know, they're missing three bats uh, in their lineup. Uh, but with that being stated, the total is six and a half, and I don't really see Boston hitting McClanahan. Wachowski kind of has been flammable. What's your take on the game? I'm with Paul in this one. I like Tampa Bay in all parlays. I'm not sure if I have the stones to put it on the run line, but they were good to us uh, last time. Gabe is a dog. They keep on cashing tickets. Uh, there's a piss pitching mismatch. I like the way Paul's attacking it in the first five as well. Uh, that's when, you know, I don't know how long he's going to stay in the game for, but McClanahan's been money in the bank. And uh, Tampa Bay is just one of those teams, man. They just keep on grinding and grinding despite the injuries. The Boston Red Sox are having problems with this team. At the trap, Tampa Bay. Put them in your parlays or you can lay the run line like Paul first five. I'm all raised as well. So the Toronto Blue Jays uh, play tonight. They fired their manager uh, today, a popular manager in the clubhouse. I understand. I understand the reasoning, but at the same point in time, I think the timing was kind of bad. I think they could have given them one more chance to turn things around considering the week, like last week. So the first base coach's daughter dies. They go on a one and nine run. They go on the road and basically they fire everybody when they get home. That's, that's how they responded. And they, they were asked about that. They said, did you consider like the, the losing streak and what was happening in the clubhouse? They said, well, it wouldn't have been fair not to just be straightforward with them. I'm thinking really. And then, so you get back home It's before the all-star break, not to mention, you know, you have the Kansas city Royals coming up. You can rack up some wins, and suddenly everything's fine again going into the All-Star break. But, yep. you know, they're feeling pressure from, from above. Atkins and Shapiro feeling pressure from Rodgers, and it's just a domino effect. It is what it is. But we can bring this up. Yeah, the base running was sloppy. There's no, no, you know, listen, I wouldn't have had a problem if they would have just demoted the third base coach, Ken. They would have said, Rivera, you can't be. You can't Rivera be needs to. Like, he needs yeah, some time you gotta, off. You come sit He's on the even... bench. Yeah, like, he, just he, come sit right. on the like, bench. Never... And someone else it's is going to be at third base. You're absolutely you right. Like, when do we break... you know I mean? like... when did we break down a third base coach's mistakes? Yeah. But he has been wrong, not just by a lot. Like, sending guys that are out by yeah. 20 feet. It's like, Louis, He's been a problem. do you watch the game? He has. It's yeah. almost like, it's like, what's wrong, bud? Sit down. So, like, I would have told Montoya, listen, Rivera's got to sit down. I would have said he I can't agree. be there. There's been too many base running blunders. But, yes. you know, you give, give him the week here. Because, you know, if you really want to break it down, Matt Chapman's hitting 220. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is having an average year. He just is. Everybody wants, you know, we Probably love him. Right fine. Here. He's a great kid. He's having an average year. Bo Bichette's having less than an average year. Kikuchi was a train wreck. Barrios is hit or miss. You never know what you're going to get from him. Gossman is hurt. The first base coach's daughter dies in the middle of a game. They find out in the middle of the game. They all break yep. down in tears. They go on a one and nine losing streak. Only two teams in the entire major leagues have left more runners in scoring position. Can the manager can't do that for anybody? The manager can't like get a clutch hit for you. Can you know what I mean? Like people get mad like at Dave point. Roberts because Cody Bellinger pops out with the bases loaded. What the hell do you want exactly. Dave Roberts to do? 
Right. 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 You know what I mean? It's the players. It's the Remember, it was before it was Gibbons' fault. It was Cito's fault. It's always the goalie's fault in Toronto or the manager's fault. It's the players oh, yeah. looking the damn mirror. And they had a rough I week, and teams have a rough week. I'm just saying I would have given them a, I would have given them a chance this week. But what do you think about tonight, Cam? Are they going to win tonight against Zach Wheeler and the Phillies? I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, Gabe, to back up every point that you said for people in the know in the organization, Charlie Montoya was light. So this comes from way, way, way up top here. They're feeling pressure, as you said. They're going up against Zach Wheeler. You're getting the Phillies as a dog. Vladimir Guerrero is struggling, watching him swing at air. Even my boy uh, Kirk, he's, he doesn't look right in the last little bit of a while. He had a couple singles early, but earlier in the game he wasn't there. You said it. This team is just, they're not copacetic. Uh, I I don't know. I think the Phillies like Phillies are have a better pitcher going tonight. I'd worry about the Jays tonight. Very worried. I don't think they get the pop either. Normally, Paul, I don't care what sport it is, Major League Baseball, NHL, uh, except football. Football's different, but you know, MLB, NHL, NBA. It seems to be a big baseball thing too. Oh, and they fired the manager and, and hockey. Oh, it's the first first game with the new coach. They're gonna win. Yeah, what if the players like the guy? Right? They they just got fired. Right? Like, it could go both ways. I brought it up earlier, Paul. Look, when the Phillies fired Girardi, didn't think it was Girardi's fault, they did get better. Right? They started winning more games. The Angels fired Madden. They got worse. Worse. So, right. I don't know. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. Do you buy into the uh, the new manager bump at all? Has that ever been a betting trend for you? No. I, I mean, sometimes – well, sometimes in football, yes. I think uh, you can tell when a, a manager – uh, particularly in football, sometimes basketball has just lost the team and they're just not trying and there's bickering and they they don't have any respect for the uh, for the coach. Yeah, and like Joe Judge, I understand. <laughs> he's getting rid of the substitute teacher and bringing back the regular teacher and all of a sudden the level of respect goes up and you get better performance. And also players tend to be worried about their jobs as well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes I think you have to pick your spots here, but, uh, you know, in some cases it's just a random occurrence and it will not change the performance of the team uh, or have a defined effect on it. That's a tough, tough game tonight, Cam, this game. I lean with the Phillies. Zach, Zach Wheeler's good, man. And the thing about stripling is he has pitched better, but – They've seen him in the National League, too. Former Dodger. Like, they've seen him a lot, right? It's like, I don't know, man. I want to take the Jays. I'm a homer. I admit that. But the value seems to be on Philadelphia with uh, with Wheeler going as a dog. Hate to say it. Got the Dodgers and Gonsolin uh, tonight. Uh, Paul, yeah. before we get you out of here, because me and Cam will get into more baseball, um, you've been uh, doing great when you join us with the WNBA. And, you know, it's amazing because the Aces and the Liberty, every time I look up, I see new records uh, being broken. Sabrina, 21 points in a quarter, you know, 74 points combined in a quarter, etc. All kinds of records being broken. And incidentally, they happen to be playing again tomorrow morning, actually. An early game uh, tomorrow. What is it tomorrow? Uh, let me you know, confirm the time. Yeah, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Las Vegas Aces and uh, New York Liberty. It's not the best start time for a Vegas team, I'll tell you that. The total's 172 and a half, Paul. How do we not bet the over? What's the number on the game right now? Because I One, didn't see a number. Six and a half. The Aces minus six and a half. One seven. All right. Well, let, you know what? And I, I want to thank you, Gabe. See, I'm being very, very complimentary today because you did give me credit on the WNBA last week, and we took 11 and a half. So now you're down to six and hey, a hold half. Hold on, Paul. And, well, hold this thought. We'll hit this on the other side because I love the over in this game. It's got to go up, too. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. 
we saw movement in the marketplace like fantasy Magic. sports the today cavaliers are a little thin as well news wire minus 160 favorite on the money line today for arizona pharrell and coast to ABG, coast that's where they win cups they win stanley cups over there give me the game penalty. time decision kind of bizarre when you consider it like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What stood out to you most about game number one of this ginormous July series between Atlanta and New York? How good both of these teams are. I, I mean, but you highlighted if the Mets are doing what the Mets were built to do, which was, you know, have Scherzer and have DeGrom and have those guys shoving and kick it right to the bullpen and one of the best closers in the game. I mean, you're looking at Edwin Diaz striking out more than half of the batters he's facing right now. It is outrageous. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. How about an Oriole win at Wrigley against the Cubs and the game to go over five and a half. So we move that total down a couple of runs. Orioles to win parlayed with it, plus 145 tonight. I'm on that. Yeah, I think that'll happen. Last night, we went under with the Mets and the Braves. Tonight, we're going to look for both teams to score three or more runs. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Harlan with your daily numbers game at the press room at St. Andrews University, just next to the old course for the 150th Open. Everybody really excited here across the pond. A lot of stuff happening. Gaming has been accepted for many years here, Ladbrokes and otherwise. We'll get into that later in the week relative to the Open, but a Washington Post University of Maryland study just revealed that 66% of Americans think gambling is acceptable and they will or do. 50 some percent, 55% said yes in 2017 when the Supreme Court legalized and about 41% 15 years ago. The trend is up, mainstream gambling more acceptable. People understand that dollars should be used anyway for infrastructure or other causes. Not as many incidents in game or integrity issues as people could expect. Overall, it's accepted here for years in the U.S. It's becoming more and more accepted. Game Time Decisions continues. I am Gable Morantia, Kicking over to Reggie Reddick, Cam Stewart, Paul Bovey in the house just for a couple more moments. We'll get Paul's take on this, this WNBA game uh, tomorrow. It's an early morning start, uh, actually, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And I want to get the scores up, actually, of the last two times that these teams uh, have played. And uh, so we cashed. The, yeah, remember, yeah. so we cashed the ticket as the underdog. And then there was payback, yeah. though, after, right? This is the third time they're playing in, like, a week, isn't it? Yeah. Like, they're playing a lot. Yeah. Let me get the let me get the dates up here. So what did they get to, Paul? They got to 20... What did they get to? 208. 208. 208. 223, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> Check me out. Nuts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I've been seeing in the WA. I talked about it on Sports Rage last night, Cam. You look at it. We're leaving some money on the table with these overs in the WNBA. Some of these games, man, like, they're setting records. Like there was a, the other night, there were 74 combined points in a quarter. All right, so tomorrow, let me just get the history up here. The last uh, the last two games, real early start time. It's eight o'clock for Vegas in the morning here. All right, head to head, they've gone. So yeah, 107, 101, 107, 101, and um, so the the uh, the road team has won the last two times. Remember, so remember, Cam, we were getting 11. You said, should we sprinkle on the money line? And we didn't. Yeah. Uh, but they, 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 they won the game outright. They won 116, 107. And remember, Paul? Yeah. Michael of the day. Okay. Yeah. yeah we, we didn't do it. Didn't do it. 
No, uh, he, for no, he didn't. That was the speaking problem. Speaking of which, how'd that Golden State Warriors money line? I told everyone last night, told those big obvious dogs in the uh, the big favorites camp in the summer league. Yeah, that's the way it works, <laughs> buddy. That's the way it works. The thing that looks easiest, it's the hardest, friend. You know the way I took works, the Lakers man. blindly plus five yeah. just because everyone loved the Clippers. Lakers won outright by 10. Yeah, that's the way it works. Just do the opposite <laughs> yeah. now. Exactly. Uh, capping, whatever. Oh, summer league? Whatever. Except the Pacers. Yeah. The Pacers are going to win this thing. Pacers are going to win the yeah. summer league. All right, so yeah, 107, 101, guys, and 116, great, great memory, Paul. So they got to 223, and they got to 208, 208, and we got a 172 on a, and a half right now on the board. How do we not take this? Well, you got to figure it's going to go up. Uh, but, you know, you wonder why they set a number this slow, too. I, I, you know, you can't help but think, hey, what do they know that we don't know? I'm not saying they're going to be right. But you got to figure, hey, they eclipsed 200. All of a sudden, they're still in the 170s. But then again, last week, the, the total, I believe, was in the 160s. So they've adjusted. They may have under-adjusted, which oftentimes happens. They had a 169.5 and a 174. Oh, okay. So the 69.5 was, yeah. yeah. What about the Liberty? Good. Like, is this too obvious? These guys, it's 8 o'clock in the morning for them. New York beat them before. We're getting points. They're playing better. Like, I don't know. Is it too, like, that's crazy. Like, that's got, that's really early for Vegas. Like, they got to be out of sync. Early start Str- time. Strange start time. What do you think, Paul? Yeah. What about exactly. the points? You know what? I'm, I would lean to taking the points. Uh, I want more, to be honest. You want more? Not as strong. Not as strong as last week. Let's put it that way. I, I would, it's, it's a lean. Last week, 11 and a half was just, as we said, we discussed it. It's insane. There was no reason for it yeah. uh, based on the prior 10 games of each team. So I got to lean to the points here for a close game. And, you know, who knows who comes out on top. But if, if you have the six and a half, you should get a cover. Hey, Gabe, last for- week it was an order. This week it's a suggestion, I guess, right? Because at 12, we were getting so many damn well, we points. Well, yeah, that, that was too many that points. That was an yeah. order. Yeah, that was yeah. too many points. But well, the thing is, yeah. to me, it's the over here. Uh, yeah. I know it almost seems too obvious. I should note the last five times these two teams have played, it's gone over the number. All right. It's gone over 171, 173, 172 and a half, 169 and a half, and 174. It's gone over every time. So, hey, by the way, by the way, look, I'm going to sprinkle Will Zalatoris again because now he owes me money. And okay. as you oh, said, yeah. last- you got some open picks. Yeah. <laughs> he owes me money. I mean, that has, well, now you just have to take them every tournament from here on yeah, out. The rest that's of your exactly life. what you said, and that's what you have to do. And I got 32 to 1 on this one, and eventually he's going to hit pay dirt, and maybe it's this weekend. You know, the last two times he did not make the cut in the Byron Nelson and the Charles Schwab, he came back, tied for fifth in the workday. But the prior one, he tied Justin, they went to the playoff, and of course, he went down in flames. So he, he's bounced back. He's shown the ability to bounce back and clear his head. So I'm going with Will, and I'm taking Tony for now to make the cut, who's made it five straight times, no worse than 27th, and I only lay 220. I don't like laying 220, but I definitely think this guy makes the cut. I think that Tony Finau is actually a player we're not talking about enough, actually, coming into this. I don't know if he can win, but I think he could be in the mix, uh, uh, Cam. Um, how do you feel? I can't, how do you feel about Will Zalatoris? You're not all in on Willie Z this week, are you? No, I'm not. But here's the thing: it doesn't really matter. I, actually, Will Zalatoris should hope for worse conditions because that'll take a lot of the small ball hitters out of the mix. Right now, they're talking about pristine conditions at St. Andrews, but you've seen Scottish weather; it turns on a dime. Will Zalatoris has a penetrating ball flight that is one of the only guys. Actually, and it's funny, Paul, another guy you mentioned, Tony Finau. Justin Thomas, those are one of the bigger, biggest hitters on tour. Guys that can pummel it right through that Scottish wind. I would say if you're liking Will Zalatoris, you almost hope for worse conditions to take all of these plotters out of the mix and all the guys who hit it long are going to be the only ones who can tackle that course. But as of right now, Marenzi, checking the weather, it seems pretty pristine, but they've said that before. I remember one time they said it was going to be sunny, and I watched Tiger Woods shoot like an 82 in a hurricane. So things change quickly in Scotland, big time. Right, all right. Open Championship goes off in the overnight hours uh, this evening. My sort of Willie Z, uh, Paul, is uh, Xander Shoffley. 
Xander Shoffley. That's the guy who I've taken a bunch of times. He's fallen short, so I'm almost like, you know, I almost have to take him now every time. I lost yeah. the value from from the 25 to 1 that he was last week. And I'm sticking to my guns here, Cam. I think uh, I think we could be sleeping on Seamus Power. Uh, to, I, like you know, I really power. do. I think Seamus Power, you know, on, on the links here, I think he's flying under the radar. I think he's a nice top 20 pick as well, Seamus Power. Yeah, I put Seamus Power top 20 or 40. Irish, just because he played the PGA's, played links courses before. I think a lot of the Irish golfers will do well. I told Paul, you know my pick, Gabe. I like Shane Lowry, the Irish Bear. I think he can win this whole thing. Uh, I think he's dangerous on this type of course, right? And the thing is, the European guys, look at the, them for uh, good finishes. They played on these type of tracks their whole lives. They also use the Texas wedge, the putter, a lot more. You could putt it from almost anywhere around here if you're comfortable with the putter, and that's one thing. What does Will Zalatoris do poorly? Short putts. He's got the yips. He's great at long putts, so he'll bring it out from all those flat spots, and that's how you do it. That's how you play Lynx golf. You don't have to use the wedge because the lies are very, very tight in Scotland, so a lot of guys are going to be using the putter, and I think putting will be neutralized on these greens. But the key is playing, being able to have a great bunker game, Renzi, and being able to penetrate the ball through wind. Paul Bovey, great uh, great insight as always, uh, Paul. We appreciate uh, you taking the time to be with us. Three weeks away from uh, from football. Let's do this thing. Preseason. Looking forward to Col- okay. college football. I, I, too, I'm, the I'm sending you, uh, it's on the way, when you get a box, there'll be a Mason Rudolph bobblehead inside. So open it carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's turning the ball over. Uh, yeah, I, just I, getting hit by somebody. Oh, yeah, look at the ball out. Sort of, you're going back or... <laughs> Throwing his helmet at someone or something. That's right. Action That's shots. Nice. <laughs> Hitting Miles Garrett with his helmet. That's right. Uh, or, sorry, he got hit with the helmet, right? Or did he get hit? Yeah, I don't yeah, even he remember. Got, what, he, what got got he got hit. Yeah, he got hit. With it. Yeah. He got Didn't he deserve it, yeah. though? What did he do? Did he do he something to deserve off. it? Well, Garrett says he said something like a racial slur, and he decided to hit him with his helmet. That's, that's how the story went down. Yeah. Well, it came out. I, I remember... Later. I remember the Steelers were actually mad at Mason Rudolph about it, though, too. They were they like, were. he didn't handle that very well. <laughs> like, you know, they well, didn't like the way he instigated. Like, he didn't he didn't defuse the situation very much. I just I remember they were mad at him at the time. Mason Rudolph. Uh, all right. Good stuff, Paul. I didn't think we were going to talk Mason right, Rudolph today. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Thanks, Paul. Take care, guys. <laughs> See you, Paul. Uh, Mason Rudolph. All right, Ken, there's a story I saw here. I don't know if you saw this. I tweeted about it earlier. Um, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't really care about the live guys. I want to get the picks, but mm-hmm. I just find that these guys are real pieces of work. So they put a knife in the tour's back. They're allowed to play in these majors, but they're not happy about their tee times. And I like the fact, Cam, that the Open did not set up. Everyone gets a little microphone in a press conference. None yep. of the live guys did. <laughs> It runs yeah. deeper than that, Morency. It runs deeper. It's there like, was a big statement today. I watched the press conference. This guy basically said, it's like football. Where do you start? Pop Warner College, whatever. He goes, you're destroying golf from its feeder system. What do you do when you get better, Morency? Say me and you are golfing. We join the web.com tour. Then we join another tour. You start like, you know what I mean? And then you climb your way to the PGA tour. What's the incentive? So what do live guys do? Some kid just like fresh, you know, he's a 14-year-old phenom. Let's sign him. It changes the whole process for somebody building into a career. It's a, The Brits, they, they, the RNA ripped those guys this week. They, they're very pissed off. Oh, yeah, they're not impressed. They're, no. they're angrier. They're more like than the, the U.S. majors are. Big the time. U.S. majors didn't seem to care. They're like, yeah, whatever. You can play here. These Don't guys are hardcore. Guys. They ripped them. Yeah. Um, so Phil Mickelson, Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, and Dustin Johnson all did not receive a press conference. We're not scheduled press conferences by, uh, the open, uh, media committee and, uh, the live guys, the live guys, um, um, Kevin Na, Kevin Na is reportedly shocked about hearing about Mickelson's, um, pairing. He's playing with Lucas Herbert and Kurt Kitayama. <laughs> and, uh, he said, for everything that Mickelson has done for the sport, he deserves a better pairing in this. It's like, what are you talking about? You, you guys want the money, do? and then you, you you want them to kiss your ass yeah. when you come and play? Like, hey, Here's another tip, yeah, nah. You got enough shut money. Your Book your own press conference. Yeah. Here's another you thing. You, you tell talk? Kevin Nah, who finished freaking third or fourth last week, it was Kurt Kitayami, you dummy. Like, does this guy even watch golf? 
stupid fool. The Kirk Kitty Amma like almost won the Scottish Open and this guy's ripping him. I, I hate Kevin Na. I'm going to be honest with you. I think he's one of the biggest jerks on the tour. He's such a clown. He is an absolute clown, that guy. Oh, my, unbelievable. Who cares? It's funny. <laughs> Cam's getting fired up at Kevin Na. Yeah, he's the one bitching. Kevin he's Na was idiot. reportedly shocked when hearing about Mickelson's pairing considering all that he has done for golf over the years. Who cares? Who cares? I just like that these guys, whatever, you guys want the money. Don't expect them to kiss your ass when you exactly. show up. Exactly. That's the thing, Renzi. If you guys want to take cheating on your wife, and get rich. Rich. Yeah. it's like and, cheating on your wife and showing up at the Christmas dinner with your new wife because the kids are there and expecting everyone to be all happy. Right? That's it's a great like, point. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like, like dude, yeah, you're cheating you on us and you're showing up here with your new wife and stuff. And then you're upset that you're not like given the toast at the table. Like, Excellent. Like, point. I mean, just shut up. You're lucky you're exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's exactly what those guys should do. You get a chance to play in a major. You know what? I'll tell you, though, those Scottish guys, that guy gave all those guys so much shade at the press conference game. It was awesome. That's the thing. Like, he was actually disappointed the PGA Tour for not being mad enough. He kind of said, come on, guys, let's go. He wants to get these guys together. Hey, man, that's the thing. This live stuff, it's a joke. Greg Norman didn't get invited to the dinner. Like, Greg, stay at home. We don't want you there. Bye. Uh, another live golf tour discuss the treatment that they have gotten under anonymity to the golf. Well, why don't you put your name on it to golf digest the way yeah. they've acted this week. It just shows, shows how threatened they all are. No, they just don't want you there. They just they can, they, they, the are... British open is going to be fine without you. Like, exactly. They, they don't need working. you. <laughs> need you DJ. <laughs> you guys are unreal. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. 69% of the games for Houston away from home this year have hit an under, the most in all of MLB. And in Anaheim, the Angels have the highest under percentage as a home team as well. 61% of the Halos games at home hitting an under. What does that lead us to today with Noah Syndergaard on the bump for Los Angeles? An under of a total at eight. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Mahomes has one of them. Checks in at two. Tom has one of them. He checks in at four. And then there's Lamar Jackson. Not inside the top ten. Sometimes I wonder if I pulled up recent NFL trivia, would people just fall all over themselves trying to remember that an MVP award was won by Lamar Jackson. Execs and coaches and maybe even players, it seems, around the league not showing respect to Lamar Jackson. Only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. People still don't buy this team's going to be any good. And we got gifts in the last two years to get low win totals. The people said, ah, Derek Carr sucks. Thank you. I've cashed both over bets on the on the Raiders win total. I'm coming back in again today, this year with the over on the Raiders win total. But I'm going to be more heavily committed to the team because I think the team's got real playoff potential. The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. You can't make a case that Roy McIlroy is not going to be a factor. Everything says that he will be there Sunday afternoon. He's playing angry. He's motivated. Give him a golf course where it's going to test him, get his full attention. He's going to be dangerous. Colin Morikawa, I feel like he's sleeping 
under the radar a little bit. But again, what did he show us last year? People say, well, he can't play Lynx golf. No, 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 not, not the case. He can hit his marks better than anyone. The Sports Grid Network. Game Time Decisions continues. I am Gable Moranci. And, of course, last night, me and Cam had a Toronto Blue Jay New York Yankee parlay. And Cam were sweating out the Blue Jay game all night. Yankees up 3-0. And, uh, of course, Cam, do you know the Yankees were 49-0. 49-0 when leading going into the ninth inning this year. And, of course, they give up four runs to the sizzling red-hot Cincinnati Reds, who have won five games in a row, Cam. All these weird – there's a lot of weird streaks going on in baseball – uh, right, right now, what do you think happens tonight in this game with the Reds and the Yankees? I think the Yankees absolutely pulverize them. I will take them <laughs> on the run line. I don't like to lay 66. I almost want to take a two and a half. Like, that can't happen, Marenzi. Like, that's that, that's honest to God. Like, I can't, like, that was shocking to see that happen. But I like the Yankees on the run line. Uh, you know what? And we're going to do a parlay. What's this going to be? Yankees and Rays. What's that? I'm going to go back. Minus 105. Sold. That's what I'm going to do. I don't really have an opinion on the other games. I like the Dodgers, but that's at 746. What do you got? I'll take the Yankees on the run line. Uh, Yankees minus one and a half. I'm going to take the um, Philadelphia Phillies. It's probably I'm not a, a fan game. of betting against the Toronto Blue Jays, to be honest. But um, yeah. I don't think they're going to respond well to this. I think Philadelphia is going to beat them tonight, to be honest. They're lucky to get Kansas City without, like, 10 players. That's why they really shouldn't have fired. They really screwed them over, in my opinion. I don't know. They I just, did. That's the feeling I get. Like, Good point. I'm going to go under seven in the Rays and Red Sox. And I like Paul's parlay there about um, under four and a half in the first five, Cam, but the Rays need to be winning. Parlay to plus 230. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. That's a good, that's, that's an interesting play. I like that. Anything else at seven o'clock for you? I was looking at the White Sox with Giolito, but no, I'm going to pass on that game. Uh, pass. Hard pass. All right. So we'll get into uh, – I like the Dodgers a little bit uh, later on. We'll get into that. Uh, but as far as the early action here, let's go under the number with Boston and Tampa. Let's uh, lay a run and a half with the New York Yankees. And let's take the Philadelphia Phillies as small dogs to beat the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm Jay Berman with this Sports Grid update. Let's start in baseball. Big news before the action today. The Blue Jays fired manager Charlie Montoyo. They were promoted bench coach John Schneider to interim manager for the remainder of the season. Of course, if the playoffs began today, the Blue Jays would be one of those three wildcard teams in the American League. The Blue Jays tonight will face the Phillies. That game will get underway in about 10 minutes. Zach Wheeler, Ross Stripling are your starters uh, in this one. We do have uh, several games in progress, including the Mariners, who won earlier today. Split doubleheader. 